Well, I certainly thought he uh, uh, had a good account of himself. Uh, he looks uh, confident out there. We know he's inordinately uh, uh, understanding what it is uh, he does and can do. And uh, uh, we, we've seen him do it. We know he's capable of, uh, if he really needs to, carry the whole load. Jerry Jones, Cowboys owner, talking about rookie running back Tony Pollard, who had four carries for 16 yards against the 49ers on Saturday night. Not exactly the kind of performance that cries out, this guy's ready to be the new Ezekiel Elliott. But look, they, they, they've, they've got to do what they can, Chris, with what they have while they wait for Zeke to come back. Whether Tony Pollard, Alfred Morris, whatever other move they make, we're, we're over two weeks in to this holdout right there's no sense of urgency on either side nope. you don't get the sense they're talking that they're exchanging proposals that anything is happening and who knows what's going to ultimately happen but the cowboys are doing after i think starting off in a very shaky way because they didn't expect elliot to hold out they've done a nice job of reacting and digging in and they the have. question is going to become who blinks yeah they're 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 trying to sell us and doing a pretty good job that they think they're going to be okay but uh, I'm still here to say that they're not going to be as good with Tony Pollard at running back as they would with Ezekiel Elliott again Tony Pollard there's a lot of things I like I like them coming out of Memphis he does a little everything I mean it really a lot of his great plays at Memphis were at the wide receiver position Mike catching wide receiver screens doing like doing things like that making plays down the field he's a slasher you know he does have good speed he can make plays happen all that but he is not a proven bell cow by any stretch of the imagination and Ezekiel Elliott we know that's his bread and butter bread and butter when there's nothing there and there's zero yards to be had Ezekiel Elliott's gift is that he's strong and powerful he lowers his shoulder he lowers his head and he still gets three yards when most running backs would get zero and then you're in second and seven and that's a lot better than second and ten and it's those little things that I think are just going to continue to pop up where Cowboys coaches and evaluators are going to realize they're missing him. Pollard, I think, will have a nice place within this offense, but he's more almost like a third down, you know, change of pace back to me than the guy that you built this team to be around, which is sledgehammer, sledgehammer, oh yeah, and then he has speed to break 50 and 60 yard runs. That guy's special and that guy deserves to be paid like the highest paid running back in football, and they can say all they want. They're, they're going to miss Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, and the question becomes, when does someone say, okay, we have to work this out? 1993, it was after two regular season games, both of which the Cowboys lost, that the Emmett Smith holdout was resolved. Shereen Williams last week pointed out that was Emmett blinking, not the Cowboys. So I don't know how much longer the Cowboys would have done it, but the Cowboys are looking at this two ways, long term and as a business. And yes, they want to win. They desperately want to get back to the Super Bowl, but they're not going to upset their overall vision for how they build their team by having one guy say, right. I want more than what they are willing to pay him. And they thought they were going to be able to wait till next year. And you know what, Chris? I, I wonder whether at some point they just say, hey, Zeke, offers off the table. You're under contract for two more years. If you show up, fine. If you don't, fine. We're moving forward without you. And uh, we'll see if it comes to that. And, and you know, we been kicking around ideas of players they could acquire that would maybe make everyone believe they're serious about it. Shereen mentioned last week LaShawn McCoy. They've got a glut of running backs in Buffalo. Yes, they do. What if the Cowboys decide, hey, hey, Zeke, we got you on the books for three and a half million. Well, we'll welcome you back whenever you show up. Until then, we got LaShawn McCoy for this year. Now, six and a half million is a lot more than they're going to want to pay, but if they could work out some sort of a deal, some sort of a trade, whether it's him, whether it's Adrian Peterson, you know, somebody more than a rookie in Tony Pollard or an Alfred Morris, somebody that would make us all say, wow, yeah. they're serious about this. I, th I feel like that's the big move that the Cowboys could make it really would send a strong and clear that message would. to Zeke. That would send a huge message. That would mean that they're ready to, they're prepared to, to, to go into the season and play the season without him. That's, that would be big time. And I'm not sure that that wouldn't piss Ezekiel Elliott off even more to now then he goes, all right, you got your running back. Trade me, do something, get rid of me. So I don't know if that's going to be the best way to mend those fences. The other thing I want, I want to ask you this, Mike, because I wasn't on the show last week. Do you believe like what Steven Jones tried to say with Le'Veon Bell reset the running back? market you and I never got discussed this I don't think that's true I understand you take into account but I don't think he reset the market with what Le'Veon Bell did well and I think 
it's it's to, in any negotiation once you cross a bridge you can't come back. Stephen Jones had already said that Todd Gurley's deal is the starting point for Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, you can't then say it's not. Yeah. Oh well, Le'Veon Bell was a free agent. He was unrestricted. There was no draft pick compensation, and that's what he got on the market. So that's what the market bears. No, Todd Gurley still got more, and Todd Gurley got his from his team after three years of of high level service. It is far easier to draw parallels. Yes. To Todd Gurley than, than it is to Le'Veon Bell, and right. also Le'Veon Bell has five years of wear and tear, and you could argue he's got less tread on the tire. And Todd Gurley's a whole year, year. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I, all those factors considered, yeah, I I think that Ezekiel Elliott's situation is closer to Todd Gurley, so I don't yeah. buy that. Right. But this is what the Cowboys are trying to do. They're trying to pay less, and they're putting any argument they can out there. We'll be back with more right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.